Hi, fellow believers in Christ. I just wanted to say a couple of things, and then I wanted to share a couple of things that the Lord in His love inspired me to write. And um, so, first of all, I just want to say um, I had to delete a couple, a few comments from the this YouTube channel, and I'm really sorry I had to do it because when I was deleting the inappropriate comments, I had to delete some nice comments with it. So I apologize to you people who I had to delete your nice comments, but they were attached to n nasty comments or inappropriate com comments. So I, um, I was wondering what to do about certain comments for a few days, and then the Lord gave me a piece to just delete them. And that's what I'm going to do from now on. From now on, if there's anything put on the channel that isn't isn't edifying to anybody, I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, I just wanted to tell people that and apologize to those who had their nice comments deleted. And then the other thing is um, I would like prayer for me and for this channel because um, I know there aren't very many people watching it, but if you are watching it regularly, um, please pray for me on this channel. For me, I would like prayer that I do not fall into any deception, I do not fall into any sin, um, prayer for my physical health, um, and prayer against the enemy and spiritual attacks. And then um, for the channel, um, just pray that um, people are blessed through it and that people are drawn closer to Jesus through it and that the right people are watching the channel and um, the people who the Lord wants to watch the channel. And um, I just pray for all of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ um, that you are protected from all harm and evil and that um, the Holy Spirit draws you closer and closer to Jesus and that you receive full salvation if you don't have it already um, and that we all see each other in heaven in Jesus' name. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to share, um, I think first I'll share a prayer with you that I wrote, and it was just between me and Jesus for a long time, but I just feel inspired to share this with you tonight. Um, Jesus, I love you. And the reason I'm sharing it is because I think a lot of you would can relate to this and would pray the same prayer. So this is for you. Jesus, I love you. You are all truth and all love because you are one with the Father and the Spirit. You suffered everything that I have suffered and much, much more beyond my imaginations. I'll never know in this life how much you suffered for me. I feel your love for me. It is a dim feeling because my heart is cold and deceitful at times, but even my cold heart can feel your love. Your love is that great. Praise your holy name. Father of love and life, spirit of truth and wisdom and power and perfect peace and counsel, Son, Jesus, who heals, forgives, delivers, cleanses, saves, and loves. My Father, you love me. Jesus, you saved me. Holy Spirit, you guide me. I am delivered. I am set free. You have called me your own. You have been so patient with me my whole life. I want to love everyone as you do. Um, with total acceptance, forgiveness, hope, endurance, humility, patience, grace, kindness, thoughtfulness, and honor. Let me feel other people's hurts rather than my own. Let me put other people before myself, but never before you. Guide me in every turn, sweet, sweet spirit of the Lord. Shelter me in your wings, Father. Give me the gifts and grace that you give your children whom you love. Heal and cleanse us, Jesus. Shine your light into our world. Deliver all of us. Visit me, Jesus. You are love. Heal me. You alone are my joy and strength. Thank you for making a way out of all sin and into your light. Bless all those who seek you today and every day. Amen. So now the other thing I want to share today is our talk for today, which is about um, the riches that we receive in Jesus Christ as believers. 
Um, yes, the Lord will always provide for all of our needs. That doesn't mean that he's going to make us materially rich. That doesn't mean that he's going to make us wealthy. Um, in fact, I think usually the Lord would rather not make us wealthy and that when he does give us money, the purpose of him giving us money is for us to take care of his body and his people. Um, but let's talk about the real riches in Christ, which are way better than money. But God always promises that he will take care of all your needs. And you may not have any money in your checking account, but you're still going to have food on the table. And you may not know how you're going to pay next month's bills, but the Lord will, will pay those bills for you. The miracles happen all the time. I've seen so many financial miracles. I wish I had cataloged all of them throughout the years, all the financial miracles that I've seen, um, because it's been a lot. And I'm sure you can say the same thing too. Jesus always takes care of our needs. And we don't need to be rich for that to happen. Um, a lot of times people would just drop food at your doorstep or somebody will mysteriously pay a bill for you um, and you don't even know who paid it. Or you'll get a, a check out of the blue in the mail from some source that you never dreamed what money would come from. Um, things happen that cause you to be taken care of. Or you'll get fed, um, you know, at... Going, by going to someone's house um, when you don't have food at your house but someone will invite you to their house and you'll get fed that way. I mean, all kinds of different things happen. So our needs are always met. We're, we don't live, even though um, our bank statement might look like we're living in poverty, we're never really in poverty because Jesus always, um, he'll always provide. And we never have to walk in fear. However, um, and, and however, there are other riches. There are other ways that, many other ways that there, that Jesus gives us his riches. It's not always in the material. Um, so anyway, we'll go over it now. Matthew, let's see. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, mammon is money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now what this verse is saying is that if you can't be faithful to the Lord in the unrighteous mammon is worldly wealth. Okay? And again, it doesn't mean that you're evil if you have worldly wealth. But it's called unrighteous mammon because it's from the world. You know, dollar bills are from the world. Um, you know, governments manufacture dollar bills. So... That's what he means by unrighteous mammon. It's, it's from the world. Okay, That doesn't mean it's a sin for you to have it. But if you cannot be faithful in unrighteous mammon, and this could also be your worldly resources, like your job, your connections, the neighborhood you live in, um, any resources that you have at your disposal. If you cannot be faithful with those things, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And in this video today, we're going to talk about what the true riches are. Now, the true riches are the spiritual riches of Jesus Christ. And this is what he gives us in abundance. Now, he'll always provide for our temporal needs, our material needs. But in the spirit, we are rich in abundance. Our cup is overflowing, okay, just as the psalm says. But your cup is not overflowing in gold, okay? Like physical gold. Your cup is overflowing in the riches of Jesus Christ. Um, Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth, leadeth you to repentance? Okay, so it's saying, do you despise the riches of God's goodness and forbearance and long-suffering? So it's saying, this is, this is showing you characteristics of the Lord that are riches. So his characteristics are riches, spiritual riches. One of his characteristics is goodness. One of them is forbearance, which I think means mercy. And the other one is long-suffering. He puts up with us for many years while we're sinning. And he waits. He's long-suffering because he doesn't cut off our life at the first 
point of sin and send us straight to hell. He's long-suffering because some of us sin for decades and decades before we get saved. And he doesn't send us to hell when we first start sinning. He waits, even though we're sinning for decades like I did, um, he still waits for us to turn to him. And he, he, can, he lengthens our life to give us a chance to turn to him. And now that's long-suffering. <coughs> and that is rich. When the Lord is long-suffering and good toward you, and he practices forbearance toward you, that is really, really rich. Yes, it is. Because, you know, the Lord could have cut off my life at the age of 23, and I would have gone to hell, you know. But he didn't, you know. Because he's, he, his riches, his goodness, his, his long-suffering, and his forbearance. Um, so this verse is saying that those are riches, and those are characteristics of the Lord. Um, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to the repentance. So him being good to us all these years, it actually leads us to repentance. And that's one of the reasons why he's long-suffering. It's not because he enjoys seeing us live in sin, um, or because living in sin does us any good. But he knows that if he that his long sufferingness um, will allow us to get saved later in life, rather than him not being long suffering and sending us to hell when we're young. Okay, Romans nine, verse twenty three, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Now, we all hope to be a vessel of mercy. And that means people that he has had his that he has had mercy upon and forgiven of their sins. So if you repent of your sins, he will have mercy on you and forgive you. Now, it's talking here about the riches of his glory. Everything he does in your life glorifies him, and that is riches in Christ Jesus. So that's pretty beautiful there too. And again, this is talking about a quality of the Lord that he is merciful and he is glorified through our lives and through the mercy that he he, he gives us um, and so that is a rich a riches of the Lord you are rich in Jesus Christ this is this is the chapter where Paul is talking about the fact that um, well in this chapter he's talking about the fact that the Jews rejected Jesus um, and so the gospel was preached to the Gentiles. And now the, the Gentiles have been blessed because the Jews rejected Jesus originally. Now the Gentiles are blessed because the gospel was brought to the Gentiles. And now the Gentiles are getting saved. And Paul says, now if the fall of them being the Jews be the riches of the world. And what he means is because the, the Jews rejected Jesus, the world can now accept Jesus because the gospel is preached to the rest of the world. And the diminishing of them, the Jews, they got diminished in faith and righteousness. They got diminished, diminished in salvation because they rejected Jesus. That are the riches of the Gentiles. And this is all it's talking about is that the Jews rejected Jesus and so the gospel is preached to the Gentiles. Now now if the fall of them, the Jews, be the riches of the world, see how now riches equals the gospel itself? So in the other two verses we learned that riches equal characteristics of God. In this verse, riches equals the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Now there is also the Jews. What, he, what, what Paul is saying is, in the end times, like his prophet, as, as is prophesied, I think, in the book of Zechariah or something, there's a book that starts with a Z, where it's prophesied that the Jews will be saved when Jesus returns. And I think that's the Jews that are in Israel at that time. I don't think it's all the dead Jews that rejected Jesus and already went to hell. But I think it's all the living Jews will get saved when Jesus returns. Um, but anyway, what Paul is talking about is there will come a day when the Jews get saved. And if the Gentiles were already blessed because the Jews rejected Jesus, how much more will the Gentiles be blessed when the Jews accept Jesus and receive him and they get saved as well. But in this verse, riches is directly 
equated with the gospel itself and salvation. So one of the, so one of the riches is the gospel itself, which leads us to salvation. Okay. Romans chapter 11, verse 33. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. So when you have wisdom and knowledge of God, you are rich. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So actually this could be describing characteristics of God again, rather than characteristics of us. It says It's saying God's wisdom and God's knowledge are riches. But it's still, if, if that's true, then you're definitely rich if you have any wisdom or knowledge from him because it would still be his wisdom and knowledge if he's part, giving it to you. It would still be ultimately from him. So yeah, his wisdom and knowledge is, a rich, is riches to you. Now these spiritual riches are a lot better than gold, okay? Because these spiritual riches have eternal consequences. But if you spend your earthly gold on, on Jesus, which is taking care of others and taking care of the body, then um, that will have an uh, eternal consequence because you'll have riches in heaven as Jesus said. Now riches in heaven last forever. The riches here are, are passing away very quickly. So if you spend your riches here on Jesus, then they will be up in heaven when you get there, and they're not going to pass away. Those riches will be forever. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. And it says, How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded, unto the riches of their liberality. Okay, so when these saints were in great trial of affliction, which often happens to saints, some saints get their heads cut off, some of them go to prison, some of them get persecuted, some of them lose their job at work for, for um, sharing the gospel, some of them get slandered publicly for sharing the gospel. Um, so saints do get afflicted, and then sa Satan attacks their health, um, and Satan will try to attack their finances, attack their relationships, attack their children, their loved ones. So yeah, saints undergo great trial of affliction. But in that, there is an abundance of joy. Now that joy is from Jesus Christ, and that joy is, a rich, is riches of Jesus Christ. So you can have joy even when you're in affliction. And joy is not earthly happy, happiness, it's spiritual happiness happiness because because Jesus loves you when you're afflicted Jesus loves you so the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty this is their earthly poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality now the liberality is spiritual freedom okay so um, and it can also be spiritual grace on others that these saints are part, are giving to others. So, um, for instance, loving others, forgiving others, preaching the gospel to others. This is how we show other people grace. And liberality is when you give generously. So it can be seen in two ways. Either the saints giving generously to others or the Lord giving generously to the saints spiritual freedom now spiritual freedom delivers you from the bondage of sin it delivers you from doubt it delivers you from fear so you have been given riches that are deliverance from every attack of the enemy plus joy on top of that when you are being attacked and when you are going through trials and afflictions Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. His grace is power. So Jesus, the grace of Jesus Christ, puts power into our lives. And that is riches. That is spiritual riches going into our lives that allow us to have the gifts of the Spirit that allow us to walk in the fruit of the Spirit, which is kindness, patience, love, self-control, temperance, all of those things, um, that give us deliverance from every demonic bondage, including physical attacks, physical health attacks. Um, so isn't that amazing? 
you are rich in Christ. That doesn't mean that you have a lot of money in your pocket necessarily. And if you do have a lot of money in your pocket, I bet Jesus is going to tell you to spend it on your neighbor. I'm pretty sure he is, or often he will. Um, or maybe you need it for something. But anyway, the main riches is spiritual riches. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 8. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This isn't talking about an earthly inheritance. This isn't talking about saints driving around in limos and stuff. This is talking about a heavenly and a spiritual inheritance that the saints have. For one thing, believe me, you don't need riches in this life. You're going to be rich enough in heaven. You're going to be unfathomably rich when you get to heaven, when it comes to temporal things. Don't worry about the temporal things of this life because they're going away fast. But heaven is forever and you'll have plenty of temporal riches in heaven. Okay? We're going to have mansions and all kinds of things in heaven. Uh, we're never going to be hungry. We're going to have the best food in, that's ever been created. Um, and it's, we're going to have the best relationships. Everything's going to be amazing in heaven. Um, no king on this earth has ever tasted any kind of kind of riches that even comes close to what the saints in heaven will taste. However, um, this verse says, "The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, so your eyes are opened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. He's called you to Him, okay." and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is our spiritual inheritance now on earth, where we sit at the throne. We sit, we share the throne with Jesus Christ in heaven right now. Um, we can enter his courts, his heavenly courts with praise, even though we're on earth in faith and in prayer. We are in the heavenly courts. And also we have a and that's our spiritual inheritance, that when we pray for things, our prayers get answered. Um, but we also have that eternal inheritance in heaven of salvation itself, which is living with Jesus forever in heaven. And of course, there's going to be plenty of riches there. <laughs> so don't worry about not being rich here in a, in a physical sense. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might, now the ages to come is heaven, okay? He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Um, now this, this might be not only heaven, but I think it is because it says ages to come. To me, that's our eternal life. But even if it is our life here, still... It's talking about the grace of God. And as I said in a previous video, grace means power. It doesn't mean forgiveness, hardly ever. Rarely, there's only two verses that I personally can remember in the Bible where grace is equated with forgiveness. In almost every verse of the Bible, grace is equated with power. Okay? So that's the power to um, resist sin, power to resist the devil, it's the power to walk in faith. Um, it's the power to have freedom from any kind of doubt. Um, and it's the power to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and have the gifts of the Spirit. In Of His grace, in His kindness toward us. Isn't that amazing? God is kind toward us. Um, it's just an amazing concept. Because in this world, this world is so cruel so cruel and so bitter and so cold in many 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 ways this is a very cold world but god is kind he is kind okay ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given and that's paul talking that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ Paul isn't talking about money. 
He's really not. He's talking about all the stuff that we mentioned before. Power, salvation, deliverance, forgiveness, the fruit of the Spirit. All that stuff is the riches of Christ. Joy unspeakable. Um, faith. Did you know that faith comes from Jesus? We, and if you don't have faith, ask Jesus to give you his faith. There's a Bible verse that says that he gives us his faith. That is one of the riches of Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Now, the reason a lot of these verses come from Ephesians, I've been told that Ephesians is the book of the Bible that describes the true church and how the true church should live, think, act, and breathe. And so if you want to live according to a new, like a New Testament saint, study the book of Ephesians. This is what I've been told. And I've read it a few times, and I still don't think I understand it well enough. I need to study it some more. But Ephesians is kind of the blueprint of what a real Christian and the real church should be like, or is like. So, um, anyway, that's why a lot of these verses are in Ephesians. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory... To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. What is the inner man? The inner man is your spirit. Okay, it's not your physical man, which is your body. It's And it's not your soul either. It's your spirit. Okay, that's your inner man. So that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. So his glory is will be strengthened by his might and spirit in your spirit. Amazing. The riches of his glory. What glorifies God? A holy life, a righteous life, a delivered life, a sanctified life, a whole life, which is saved in every way, saved from every kind of bondage, um, saved from every kind of attack of the enemy, saved from sin, Okay, that's the riches of his glory that will be in your inner man, which is your spirit. Through his spirit and might, it will be strengthened in you. Okay, that's pretty beautiful. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now here, I think this is talking about physical needs and temporal needs. But I believe it's also talking about spiritual needs because we always have spiritual needs. We, yeah, we need to pay the bills and we need to have food. We need to have clothes and all these things. And the Lord knows that. But we also need um, faith and hope and perseverance and character um, and all of that stuff too. So um, the Lord knows what all of our needs are, the spiritual and the temporal, and all of them will be supplied um, according to his riches in glory. He's glorified in his own riches, uh, which he shares with us. Okay, and that can even include healing. You know, healing is a rich, it's a riches, bad grammar, but it's one of the riches of Christ. Um, Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of, again, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery, which is Christ in you. And yes, it's a mystery because, and that's why we don't, we don't sin because Christ is in us. It isn't our, our flesh will always sin, but when our flesh is crucified and Christ is in us, that's when we don't sin. And that's why people can genuinely and honestly tell you they're not sinning. But it isn't their flesh that isn't sinning. It's Jesus Christ in them that isn't sinning. And this is the hope of glory. Because this hope of Jesus Christ in you is what, is what will allow you to be in heaven one day. Because you're not living in sin. You're living in righteousness. You cannot be righteous when you're walking in the flesh. You can only be righteous when your flesh is crucified and Jesus is, is alive in you. 
and you're walking in Jesus Christ. When he's in you and you're in him. And this is a mystery. And a lot of people don't understand this mystery because they've never experienced it. And so they call those who are walking in Christ heretics because those people say, well, I'm not sinning. And then the, and then the person who doesn't understand that mystery says, well, you're a heretic because everybody sins. Everybody doesn't sin. Everybody's flesh sins, but some people are not walking in the flesh. Some people are walking in Jesus Christ and their flesh is crucified. That's why they're not sinning. But if they lose faith and their flesh is resurrected, um, then they'll start walking in sin again. Okay? And that's why it's a mystery. Because the people who don't walk in Jesus Christ, who are walking in the flesh, they can't understand. Not only can they not understand why you're not sinning, they don't even understand that you are not sinning. And they don't believe it. Because they've never experienced what it's like to walk in Jesus Christ with your flesh crucified. And they just don't get it. No one's ever told, it, told them that that's possible. Um, and they know that their flesh sins, so they know that your flesh sins. But what they don't understand is that your flesh is crucified. <laughs> and that's why you're not sinning. They don't understand that, though, because it's a mystery. Anyway, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. and un Now, this is talking about saints. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ. So there's another mystery, which is that God, the Father, and Christ are one. Um, but I think it's also referring to the other mystery of us being a, in Christ and Christ being in us. And that can only happen when the flesh is crucified through faith. So I think it's mentioning that, it's talking about that mystery as well. But let's read it again. That their hearts, the hearts of the saints, might be comforted, being knit together in love. Now it's the Holy Spirit that knits the saints in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. So they, the whole, the, God himself makes us have full assurance of understanding of what salvation is. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. Okay? 1 Timothy 6.17 I charge them that are rich in this world, so them, those that have temporal wealth, earthly wealth, that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. Uncertain riches are the riches of this world because they can come and go anytime. You, know? you might be rich today and poor tomorrow. You might be bankrupt tomorrow. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, So temporal wealth comes and goes. And you don't know when it's going to be going. But in the living God, he gives us richly all things to enjoy. Now, what are these all things? These all things are all the spiritual blessings, plus the fact that he takes care of all of our needs. Okay? And he is going to have loads of riches for us in heaven when we get there. Hebrews eleven twenty six esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect to the recompense of the reward okay I'm not sure who this is talking about this must be talking about Moses because Moses left Egypt to follow Christ really um, and to do what the Lord wanted him to do so I believe this is talking about Moses but let's read it again esteeming the reproach of Christ now, reproach is like a rebuke when somebody's getting after you. So he, to esteem is to value. So he valued the rebuke of Christ. He valued getting told off by Jesus, getting, put, getting disciplined by Jesus. It was a greater riches to him than all the treasure, treasures in Egypt. Now, the treasures in Egypt were temporal treasures, treasures of this world, like money, wealth, fame, power. Okay, Moses could have stayed in Egypt and had all that and, can, and kept living the life of a son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He could, have, he could have lived that life till he was old and died and enjoyed all the riches of this world. But Moses thought 
that it was a greater riches to be rebuked by Christ. Isn't that amazing? Now, you, you might argue, well, Moses didn't know Christ because Christ hadn't come yet. But Moses knew God, and Jesus is God. So in that indirect way, he did know Christ. You'll, you'll notice that people in the Old Testament often spoke of the Messiah. Um, David spoke of the Messiah in his Psalms. So even though they had never met Jesus and shook hands with him, they knew that he was real and that he was coming. Um, Job, Job, in the book of Job, G, the Messiah is mentioned. I'll talk about that someday in another video. Um, there are many places in the Old Testament where, and, and it, like Moses, um, they, they had a rock where the water came out of, and in the New Testament it was said that that rock was Christ, that rock represented Christ. They also had a cloud and a fire that they followed. They followed the fire at night and they followed the cloud during the day. And in the New Testament, it says that the cloud and the fire were Jesus. Um, so they didn't know Jesus in the way that the disciples did as a man that they could talk to and learn from in that way. But they knew Christ through um, their supernatural experiences with the Lord. Okay? So that's what it's talking about here. Moses esteemed a rebuke from the Lord as a greater rich than all the temporal riches of Egypt. And and that's true for us too. Because the Lord does discipline those he loves. And the Lord does rebuke us. Um, he'll let us know when he's not pleased with us. Um, and so, but that is a greater riches to us. So even when the Lord rebukes you, it's riches. Now is that amazing or what? That's greater riches than any gold you can ever have in this earth. A rebuke from Jesus Christ is greater riches. Why? Because it'll lead you to salvation. You and and there's plenty of gold in heaven. If you like gold, it'll be in heaven. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, hi, I just wanted to end with one final thought. In Revelation, Jesus rebukes one of the churches and says that that church thinks it's rich, but it's actually so poor that it has no clothing. Then he tells them, "You're you're so poor, you're naked." And what he's talking about is that that church thinks that it's rich because it has all of its temporal needs taken care of. It's a it's a big um, it's got a big big expensive building. It's got probably thousands of people in it. It's it's popular. It's powerful. Um, it, that church has influence over its community. Um, money is pouring in. They can pay for any program or any type of thing they want to do. If they want to put on a big production, they can do it. Um, they can, um, they've got the money to um, finance any, any type of um, thing that they do in the community. And, um, you know, they probably have a, a coffee shop and a library and a bookstore and all these things in their church. And they've got the latest equipment and the best um, worship team and the best sound and, and all these things and they got a big fancy preacher who's on the radio every day and on the internet every day um, but but they are um, spiritually poor and so that even in Revelation it's emphasized that the riches of Christ are spiritual riches not temporal riches so they're not the things of this world so sometimes when everything's going right for you and you're a great big success that doesn't mean that you're a success with Jesus because um, sometimes success we might think it's spiritual because um, it's it's um, it's in the re it's in the religious um, it's part of religion and so we might think it's spiritual but but um, the real riches of Christ really are spiritual and those are all the riches that He gives us. Um, that have to do with um, walking in righteousness, um, walking in obedience, um, having the power in our lives to resist sin and resist temptation. And what Jesus tells that church is, I'll, I'll make you rich by putting you through um, the fire. And then if you come out of that fire, um, you will be refined as gold. If you fail in, in, in persecution, you won't get refined. So in persecution, we're tempted um, to fall away from Christ. 
But if we persevere and we remain faithful unto the end, then we're refined um, as being refined in fire and we're and we come out like gold. And you see in Revelation, the church that Jesus um, applauds is the church that's already been through the fire. And they are spiritually rich because what makes you spiritually rich is um, faith, love, obedience to Christ, um, resisting temptation, um, walking with Jesus alive in you, having your flesh crucified. That All that stuff builds character because when you go through temptation and, and, and all of that, um, you're you're able to come out faithful to the Lord. And the Lord's always faithful to us. But the only question is, are we going to be faithful to Him? And so, um, the church that Jesus um, commends is the church that went through the fire and came out faithful. They are like gold, but their temporal needs aren't met very, aren't met that well. They're not they're not rich in an earthly way. Um, but they're just getting their daily needs met. But but spiritually, they're extremely rich. And the church that Jesus rebukes, um, their their physical needs are oversupplied. But spiritually, they they're naked. They're so poor, they're naked. Now, remember, nakedness in the Bible is always equated with sin. Um, and when we go to heaven, those of us who go to heaven are going to be dressed in white white robes of righteousness and everybody in heaven is going to have clothing and remember in the parable now the clothing represents righteousness naked represents sin nakedness represents sin remember in the parable of the man who went to the wedding feast naked um, and, and that's because he went in sin and he was kicked out um, so the church that Jesus rebukes in Revelation is a church that has its physical needs met, but it's in sin. It's really living for itself. It's living in pride, and it's, and it's doing what it wants to do, and it's glorifying itself. It's not really glorifying Christ. It's spreading religion, but it's not spreading the gospel. Did you know that you can pursue your own desires as a pastor or a church member? just as much as you can pursue your own desires in a in a in a bar <laughs> or at a club or um at the casino you know um we can be selfish in any situation just because we're in church doesn't mean we're saints <laughs> because selfishness and sin and deception can be in us even if we're sitting in a church pew so your location has nothing to do with how righteous and holy you are. And that's what is pointed out to this church that's, um, that's naked in the eyes of Jesus. So, but again, he, he tells that church, if you go through the fire and you come out um, having overcome, you will, you will not be naked. You, you'll, be, you'll be like gold. You'll be like gold. Um, so how, how do Christians become like gold, which is riches in Jesus' eyes? Um, we obey no matter what. No matter what we go through, no matter what we're put through, no matter what temptations come along, we obey. And, um, and our flesh is crucified. When your flesh is dead, you don't want glory for yourself. You don't want pampering for yourself. You don't want power for yourself. Um, because your your flesh is what wants all those things, so so this church needs the church that Jesus is rebuking needs to have its flesh crucified. It's actually walking in the flesh, but it thinks it's holy because every it, it attaches Jesus to every sentence. <laughs> so it's deceived itself into thinking that it's holy. You know, if you like gold, now this is only an example. I'm not putting you down if you have this. I'm just using it as an illustration, okay? If you if if gold is your idol, but you want to feel holy, you can get a bunch of you can get a really expensive gold necklace, load it down with all kinds of rubies and jewels, and it and cost millions of dollars, and form the rubies and jewels in the name of Jesus, and then put that around your neck, 
and this is only an illustration, but that's like what this church has done. It's, it's, it's made itself temporarily rich, and then it just labeled it all under the name of Jesus. And, um, and that's spiritual bankruptcy. Because just because you have a Christian label, that doesn't mean you walk with Jesus at all. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to tell you um, that, and God bless you, and um, may you be blessed with all the riches of Jesus Christ.